We've looked at graphs of the sine and cosine function, and now let's go ahead and look at the graphs of the tangent and cotangent functions. Now remember when we start talking about tangent, we need to define tangent as sine over cosine. And when we look at sine over cosine then, we can talk about where the cosine of x, this fraction of tangent, sine over cosine, is undefined. So we need to be particularly aware of where cosine is equal to zero for the tangent function. So as we started graphing our other functions, let's do the same here. We're going to start a table of x values. And we're just going to choose some quadrantial values. And then also, if you recall, uh, the tangent of uh, pi over 4 multiple, any multiple of pi over 4, is going to be 1, unless it's reducible, something like um, 2 pi over 4, which reduces to pi over 2. So a multiple like pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, all of those have tangents of 1 or negative 1. So those are interesting angles for us to look at for this. So let's go ahead and look at, uh, let's start with negative pi over 2, negative pi over 4. We could also look at 0, pi over 4, and pi over 2. Well, if we think about sine and cosine, and I want to be able to figure out these values, basically I need to just think about what the sine and the cosine are. So negative pi over 2, that's in the fourth quadrant, so we know tangent is going to be, well wait, negative pi over 2 is a quadrantial angle, so we'll have to see where we're at there. So for negative pi over 2, the sine is negative 1, cosine is 0, so negative 1 over 0 is undefined tangent of negative pi over 4, that's fourth quadrant. The tangent is equal to a negative 1. Tangent is 0, sine is 0 over 1 is 0. Pi over 4 is the first quadrant. Tangent in the first quadrant is positive 1. And at pi over 2, that's sine over cosine, where 1 over 0 is undefined as well. So this gives us some values, and when we start looking at the tangent function, we'll start to see that this repeats over and over again as well. So as we're putting up these values, we want to make sure zero's on here. Let's put in a pi over 4, pi over 2. We could put in a 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4. So we're looking at ba basically these multiples of pi over 4. And then this would put us at um, 3 pi over 2 in this direction. And then here we can go negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4, negative pi. So if we graph these points, this negative pi over 2, it's undefined. I have an asymptotic line here. And I have another asymptotic line at positive pi over 2, because it's undefined at these spots. So this is a vertical asymptote at these points. Let's go ahead and plot the rest of our points. Negative pi over 4, this is in quadrant 4. So in quadrant 4, that's this region right here. So this region is Q4, this region is Q1. So for Q4, the tangent is going to be at a negative 1. So I'll call that negative 1. So there's our point. And, and then I'm at 0, 0, and then I'm at pi over 4, 1 in the first quadrant. So it might look like a straight line through here, but what it does is it comes up. Let me see if I can hit that. It comes up and curves through. I'll start at the top. Maybe I'll be better at this. <laughs> Having a tough time hitting this. It must be the scale. There we go. And I'll just move this point a little bit. There. And you will see that it, it's an increasing function, meaning if we look at this from left to right, it's increasing, it's going up. Now if you ever have problems graphing the tangent function, just think which quadrant you're in and think, am I, am I negative or positive, and that will get you moving in the right direction. So these vertical asymptotes, basically what happens is the tangent function gets closer and closer to this vertical asymptote, but it never crosses it. And as a matter of fact, I have a vertical asymptote at every odd multiple of pi over 2. So this same exact graph is going to repeat itself. 
here it's going to cross, here it's going to have a vertical asymptote, odd multiple at 3 pi over 2. Okay, and it's also going to repeat over here, but I have to stop the graph here because I don't have a vertical asymptote on the far left to stop it. So this repeats over and over again, and so we should be able to talk about some things like the domain, the range, the period, some things like that. Let's start with the domain. This function is defined everywhere except these vertical asymptotes, and these vertical asymptotes occur at every odd multiple of pi over 2. So the technical way that we say that is x, all values of x such that x cannot equal 2n plus 1 times pi over 2. 2n plus 1 creates an odd number, so odd multiples of pi over 2, where n is any integer. And the reason we say this is that it could be positive or negative, and so that takes care of the positive or negative value. Now the range goes from the bottom to the top of the graph, so for the range, the lowest that it looks like it goes is toward negative infinity, and the highest it goes is toward infinity. So we could write that a couple different ways. Now remember, this is interval notation, this first one. Um, this is our set builder notation. There's no nice way to write our set builder notation up here for the domain. So it has discontinuities, and the discontinuities occur whether these asymptotic lines are. So it has vertical asymptotes. X-intercepts means where it crosses the x-axis. It crosses at negative pi, pi, positive pi. So those look like just multiples of pi. So our x-intercepts for this graph are at any x value where I have a multiple of pi, so it could be a positive or negative multiple of pi. Now the period here is different than it was for sine and cosine. If you remember for periods for sine and cosine it was 2 pi. Well if you notice this repeats itself every pi units. So the period for tangent is pi. There's no minimum or maximum values. And because it has no min or more, no max, I can't calculate an amplitude, so it has no amplitude. Because remember, the amplitude would be the highest, the maximum minus the minimum. And the graph is symmetric, though. It has this nice quality at, at about the origin. It is symmetric. And if a graph is symmetric about the origin, if you'll recall, that means it's an odd function. Now being an odd function has a specific definition, and that means that the tangent of negative x is equal to negative tangent of x, and this is the same as for the sine. And that's easy to remember because the sine is in the numerator, so tangent is sine over cosine, tangent and sine are both odd functions. So those are some characteristics of the tangent graph. Let's go ahead and look at the cotangent graph next. And when we talk about the cotangent graph, we need to remember that cotangent is cosine over sine. Now here, sine is in the denominator, and so that's sine value can never equal zero, because I would have an undefined point then. So let's go ahead and create our table just like we did before. We're going to use some information, uh, we could use pi over 4's multiples because those are going to be very, very useful. So let's go ahead and start at negative pi. Let's go, so negative pi, negative 3 pi over 4, negative pi over 2, negative pi over 4, 0 pi over 4, whoops, pi over 4, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 4, and then we're back up to pi. So the cosine of negative pi, okay, so cosine of negative pi, cosine is negative 1, sine of negative pi is 0, so this would be negative 1 over 0 is undefined. So this is cotangent of x up here. 
negative 3 pi over 4, that would put us in quadrant 3, and in quadrant 3 cotangent is a positive 1. Negative pi over 2, cosine is 0, sine is negative 1, so 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. Negative pi over 4 is in the fourth quadrant, so in the fourth quadrant cotangent is going to be a negative 1. Cotangent of 0 is going to be undefined because cosine is 1 and then dividing by a sine of 0. Pi over 4 is in the first quadrant, so cotangent is positive. Pi over 2 is going to be cosine over sine, so that would be uh, 0 over 1 or 0. 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant where cos cotangent would be negative. And then at pi, I'm back to undefined. Okay, so I have more than one full period here because we can see that that pattern exists. But let's go ahead and sketch that and we can maybe even add a little bit more depth to the graph here. Okay, so I'm going to look at these tick marks of pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, and I could keep going with this. We could go 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and then we'd be up here at 2 pi, and we go in the negative direction as well. Okay, so what it looks like here is we have vertical asymptotes. We'll call those VAs for vertical asymptotes. At negative pi, so I'll put the vertical asymptote through here. We'll have another one at zero, so it goes right on top of the y-axis. And then looks like we have another one at pi. So it looks like we have vertical asymptotes at multiples of pi. Okay, so let's start over here and quadrant, remember this is quadrant 4, because here I'm negative pi over 2, uh, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, and this goes into quadrant 3, so I guess I better split this up a little different. So here I'm quadrant 4, here I'm quadrant 3, and here I'm quadrant 1, here I'm quadrant 2. Okay, so if pi over 4, cotangent at pi over 4 is a 1. Now over here, at pi over 2, the cotangent is 0, and at 3 pi over 4, it's negative 1. So again, it looks like a straight line, but really it comes in like this, and then heads toward negative infinity. And the same pattern occurs over and over again. So at negative pi over 2, I'm crossing. At negative 3 pi over 4, I'm up at 1. Negative pi over 4, I'm down at negative 1. And that same pattern occurs. Now this one, I don't have a vertical asymptote on the left, so I can only have the right side of the graph. And on this one, I only have a vertical asymptote on the left, so I can't extend past and go toward the right. So this repeats itself over and over again. And this is the cosine graph, or sorry, cotangent graph. Now let's go ahead and look at the characteristics of the cotangent graph. First of all, let's talk about its domain. It's all values of x such that x cannot equal. Now here, instead of cannot equal odd multiples of pi over 2 like tangent, I can't equal uh, multiples, any multiples of pi over 2 where n is an integer. So I'd have a vertical asymptote at negative 4 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. Now for my range, it's the same as for tangent. It goes from negative infinity to infinity. We can also talk about the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts here are the vertical asymptotes from the tangent. Basically, x-intercepts occur wherever I'm crossing, so I'd have an x-intercept at negative 3 pi over 2 here, negative pi over 2 here, etc. So negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2, positive 3 pi over 2, 
Okay, and so what ends up happening, this is odd multiples of pi over 2. It repeats itself every pi units. So the period here is pi. And then also there's no min or max, so there's no amplitude. Okay, also our very last thing, it is symmetric with respect to the origin. And because it's symmetric with respect to the origin, it's an odd function. So this would mean the cotangent, just like with the tangent, the cotangent of negative x is equal to a negative cotangent of x. So those are characteristics of the tangent and the cotangent function. And all of the transformations that we're about to look at are the exact same transformations as we looked at for sine and cosine. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at transformations. And then we'll also look at the, the four-step method here. And I think it's actually five-step for tangent and cotangent, but it's the same type of idea. Okay, so when we look at transformations of the tangent and cotangent graph, there's a couple ways that we can uh, write this like we did for sine and cosine, but a nice general way is to write it with the C the same as we had for sine and cosine, the A for amplitude like we had for sine and cosine, and I'm going to use tangent here and the X minus D. Now remember for our other one we had a B in front here times the quantity X minus D. Um, we, well, we might run across that as well, and so let's go ahead and update this to have a bracket here just to clarify and then x minus d. And then it will look identical to that. The only thing that's changed is the trig function. So let's go ahead and look at each transformation kind of one at a time so we can see what happens. But it really does have the same effect as it did for sine and cosine. So this value for c would be a vertical shift up or down c units. Uh, but the first one I want to look at is, let's do this a. So let's do y equal a tan of x. And again, always put parentheses around the arguments of your trig functions to clarify what the argument actually is. So in this case, the absolute value of A is the amplitude, you would think, but it's actually just going to end up being a vertical stretch. Because we just talked about how there's no maximum or minimum value, like there is for sine and cosine. So we can't say it's the amplitude. However, it is a vertical stretch or compression by a factor of A. So that's what we can look at there. So let's look at the A and now let's look at the, let's look at the B. So what if we just had a B here? What if we had Y equal tangent of BX? Well, what ends up happening with that value for b is it, it's just like you suspect it would be from sine and cosine. It's horizontal because it's within the argument of the trig function, and it's either horizontal stretch or horizontal compression. So this would be a horizontal stretch. Actually, this one would be a compression by a factor of 1 over b, that's why it's a compression, and if we had y equal tangent of 1 over b times x, this would be a horizontal stretch then by a factor of b. It's always the opposite. Okay, what else do we have here? We have the x minus d, so what if we had an x minus d? This would be our phase shift. So let's go ahead and look at an example where we have a phase shift. And again, I'm using tangent as our example, but we could plug cotangent in for any of these as well. So for this, this would be a horizontal, because it's within the argument of the trig function. So this is a horizontal shift to the right d units. Okay. 
So it's opposite of what you think because it's x minus d. You're shifting to the right, however. I can't remember if we wrote this for the other one, but uh, let's see if this was x plus d. This would be a horizontal shift to the left d units. So again, if you recall, this is called phase shift. So the value of d is called your phase shift. And usually for that value of d, we would want it from this particular form. So whatever comes after the minus sign is your phase shift. Now if that was a plus sign, your phase shift would be a negative d then. I think we also have a reflection here. So what if we had y equal negative tan x? This would be identical to what we were working with previously when we had the effect of the negative sign out front. Basically what this would be, this would be a causing of the graph to be reflected across the x-axis. So this would be reflecting the graph across the x-axis. Okay, I think the only one we haven't done is y equals c plus tan x. And the c value would be a vertical Let's see what we call this one over here. Shift. So vertical means up or down. In this case, C units. So if C is positive, I move up. And if C is negative, I move down. So these are the examples of our transformations or translations. You'll see it either way. And I think what we can do now is to kind of talk about our approach or our method for solving these or for graphing these. So we're going to look at our five-step method. I'll put the five-step out front. And when we have this five-step method, you might think, oh my gosh, I have to memorize a four-step method and a five-step method, but really they're very similar. And so once you graph a few of these, you'll see the, the similarities and they'll be pretty straightforward to graph. So what we want to do is we want to focus in on graphs that look like, let's say, um, y equal a tan of bx or y equal a tan cotan x. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, a cotan of x. You might say, well, wait a minute, what about the... Um, plus C and what about the uh, minus D type of thing? Well, we'll show you what happens with those. And what we can do is graph these basic pieces and then show how that transformation occurs. So for our first step, what we're going to do is we're going to determine the period. Well, if you recall from what our graphs we just did, the period for tangent and cotangent is pi. So what we do is we take pi then and we divide it by whatever the coefficient is in front of the B. I forgot the B right there. Now what we want to do is we want to locate the two vertical asymptotes. So we want to re re find two vertical asymptotes, one right after the other. So we want to locate two adjacent vertical asymptotes. Now if you recall, this is where the period starts and ends. And so we're going to take for tangent we will take and let bx equal negative pi over 2 because that's one of our asymptotes from tangent and we can let bx equal positive pi over 2 and solve for x. Now cotangent is different We're going to let bx equal, in this particular case, 0 and bx equal pi and solve because those were the vertical asymptotes for cotangent that were near the origin. So that's the first step. Second step, once we find them, we're going to sketch the vertical asymptotes that we just found. 
Okay, third step. We're going to take the interval formed by the vertical asymptotes and split it into two equal parts. So divide the interval formed by the vertical asymptotes in step one. We're going to abbreviate vertical asymptotes with a VA into four equal parts. And, we, and we've done that method before. And I'll show you an example again. And what we'll do then is we'll evaluate the function for the first quarter point, the midpoint, the third quarter point using the x values that we found in step three. Okay, so we're going to evaluate the function at the points found in step three. Then we're going to join the points with a smooth curve. Now make sure that when we join the points with a smooth curve you take into account the vertical asymptote because that will be really important that we keep that in mind. So I think the easiest thing we can do here is just go ahead and start by looking at a graph. So for this example, let's go ahead and graph uh, y equal, we'll do a tangent func function here, negative three tangent one half x. Now you'll also see this written y equal negative three tangent x over two. This means the same thing. So either way you see it written. Now for this one I see three transformations. I see the negative sign, which means to flip across x. I see the three, which is a vertical stretch. And I see the one half x, or the one half, which would be a horizontal, because it's in the argument of the trick function. This would be a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. So just glancing at it, that's kind of the transformations that you can see. Now let's go ahead and go into our uh, step process to figure out what this graph will look like and then actually graph this. So to get started, our first step would be to, let me scroll back up here, determine the period and then locate the two adjacent vertical asymptotes. So the new period for this graph would be the old period for tangent, which is pi, divided by this one-half. Well, pi divided by one-half is the same as pi. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, and I would get two pi. So that's my new period. Now this is the tangent graph, so what I'll do is I'll take each of the endpoints, and again, I'm getting this for them, the instructions here, and I will locate the two vertical asymptotes by taking bx equals negative pi over two, and bx equals positive pi over two. So again, I'm going to look at my vertical asymptotes. So bx, and in this case we know b is equal to a half, so I can just rewrite that one half x equals negative pi over two, and bx, one half x equals positive pi over two. Here I'd multiply both sides through by two, and the twos would cancel. And I'm left with x equal negative pi. Here I'd multiply both sides through by two, and I'd get x equal a positive pi. So these are my vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes at x equal negative pi, x equal positive pi. Now there can be more than that, but this is just enough to get us started with one period. Okay, back up to our instructions here. Step two, sketch the vertical asymptotes in step one. 
and then divide the intervals formed by the vertical asymptotes into four equal parts. Um, I guess we could start our graph down here. I don't know if we'll have enough room. I'm going to start it on the next page. So I'm going to come over here to negative pi, positive pi, positive 2 pi, negative 2 pi. Okay, and of course we'll look at 1 and negative 1. So if I were to graph the vertical asymptotes, there'd be one at negative pi and at positive pi. So this is x equal pi, x equal negative pi and they're dotted lines because they're asymptotes. Now I think there's going to be more. I think there's going to be another one at 2 pi and another one at negative 2 pi, but we haven't figured that out technically. So step two, graph the vertical asymptotes and we've done that. Okay, step three. In step three what we're going to do is we are going to take the interval between the asymptotes and split them up into quarters. So split the interval, and we can just write it out like this, from negative pi to pi into quarters. Okay, so the easy way to do that would be to take pi minus a negative pi, so we're subtracting, and I want to divide it into quarters. So pi minus a negative pi would be 2 pi, 2 pi over 4 would be pi over 2. Now what this is giving me is the width of each quarter. So our start point, and in this case it's actually a vertical asymptote, so it's not an actual point, it's that dotted line, is negative pi. And my next quarter point would be negative pi plus pi over 2. So if I had a negative pi and I added pi over 2, that would end up giving me a negative pi over 2 as my next quarter point. My next point then would be a negative pi over 2. Okay, add the pi over 2 and I'd get 0. Start with 0, I add my pi over 2, that leaves me with pi over 2, and then my last point or my end point would be pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2 or 0, or is pi, sorry. So these are my intervals, so this is my first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And so I'm going to take those end points in the start point and these quarter points and I'm going to plot them. So our special points is the way that we called those before. The asymptotes I can't use, I can't plug them in, they're already being used. So the only ones I really need to worry about are this negative pi over 2, 0 and pi over 2. Because I already know what's going on at negative pi and pi, these are vertical asymptotes. Okay, so next is our table. So this graph, I'm going to move it down. So we want our table of values. That would be our next step, so that would be step four. So we're going to evaluate the function at the points from step three. So x, and those points ended up just being negative pi over two, zero, and pi over two. So our original function, if you'll recall, was y equal negative 3 tangent 1 half x.
So our first one would be one half x here, and then I would take the tangent of one half x, and then from there I could do three tangent one half x, and then I would have a negative three tangent one half x. Okay, so if I plug a negative pi over two into one half x, I'd end up with a negative pi over four. If I plug a zero into one half x, I'd have a zero, and if I plug a pi over two into one half x, I'd have a pi over four. Now I look at the tangent of each one of these then, so the tangent of negative pi over four is going to be a negative one because it's in the fourth quadrant. The tangent of zero is zero, the tangent of pi over four is a positive one. And then I multiply each of these times three because of this three out front, and then I negate them because of this negative out front. So the points that I actually want to graph then are going to be negative pi over two, three, zero, zero, pi over two, negative three. So those are the points that I want. The, the work in between is just helping me organize it to get to these correct values for my output. So negative pi over two would be right here. So negative pi over two, and then it says to go up three. Then it says to go zero, zero, that's easy enough. And then at pi over two, it says I should be at negative three. So this is going to be a really strange graph. I'm going to extend out these asymptotes quite a bit. Remember we had that vertical stretch and we can really see that now. So it's going to come in through here. And then decrease. Now this almost looks like a cotangent graph, but remember what ended up happening here is I had to flip the tangent graph. So when we have to flip that tangent graph, I, you know, it changes the, the basic look of the increasing and it changes it to decreasing now. So I had quite a few things here. I had the stretch, the flip, and then I had that compression, or actually I had the stretch by a factor of two here. So that's the correct graph. Now, new period we already know. The new period was two pi, and so we can see that this will repeat itself every two pi units. Now if we had to look to see what was coming on here, I think I'm going to have another vertical asymptote at two pi, and this is probably going to cross at three pi over two, and this would be another period. Okay, so you can expand from there. So these graphs take quite a bit of work, especially the tangent and the cotangent, the secant and the cosecant graphs that we'll get to as well. Uh, but again, if you break it down into these smaller steps, it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and look at another example. This one will use the cotangent since we've been using the tangent so far. Let's go ahead and graph the graph of y equal, let's do a negative two minus the cotangent of x minus pi over four. Okay, so I see quite a few transformations here. I see the negative two, that would be a vertical shift down two units. And I always do my vertical shifts last, otherwise you'll get an incorrect graph. I see that negative sign in front of the cotangent. This would be a flip across the x-axis. And then I see this x minus pi over four. This is a phase shift. And this is going to be a pi over four units to the right. So I see one, two, three transformations here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go after our steps. So for our first step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, look at the period here. And the new period will be based off of our old period divided by B. Now we don't have a B here it's an implied one, because it's one x, so it's pi over one, which is just pi. So that means our period doesn't change. Let's go ahead and look at then finding the vertical asymptotes. So our vertical asymptotes then would be taking the argument here, x minus pi over four, 
and setting it equal to zero, and x minus pi over four, and setting it equal to pi. Solving for x, I get x equal pi over four. Adding pi over four across, I get x equal five pi over four. So I have a vertical asymptote, at x equal pi over four, x equal five pi over four. Okay, next we're going to graph the vertical asymptotes. And I'm going to move down to the next page to do that because I think we'll probably run out of room again. Okay, so I have vertical asymptotes at pi over four and five pi over four. So here's pi over four, here's two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four. Now I know a lot of these will reduce, but I wanna leave them in multiples of pi over four right now because it allows me to see the scale pretty clearly here. And I'm putting in some extras because I think I'll have some extras. So I have a pi, pi over four. Okay, so this is x equal pi over four is a vertical asymptote. And another one at five pi over four. Now this is interesting because when I do this, I see that this midpoint is right here. It's halfway in between one pi over four and five pi over four. So I kind of feel like it might cross at this point. I don't know for sure until I do m the rest of my work, but I think it could cross at that point. So second step is to graph the vertical asymptotes and we have that. Um, next we want to divide the interval. And our interval goes from pi over four to five pi over four into quarters. Now we already know the start and the end points are vertical asymptotes, so those really aren't um, points that we're going to actually graph. We already have them graphed as, as asymptotes. So our start point slash vertical asymptote is pi over four. And so we need to figure out what do I need to add to that? Well, let's go ahead and take five pi over four minus pi over four and divide that by four because it's in quarters. So this would be pi over four. So my next point is going to be my start point plus pi over four, which is two pi over four or pi over two. Next point is going to be two pi over four. I'm just gonna keep it with that common denominator. I could also use pi over two plus pi over four is three pi over four. Next point, three pi over four plus pi over four is four pi over four or just pi. I'm gonna clean that one up a little bit. It's hard to read. And our last or our end point which would also be an, a vertical asymptote, would be pi plus pi over four, which is five pi over four, because this would be four pi over four, once you found that common denominator. Okay, so this is my endpoint vertical asymptote. So this is a vertical asymptote, this is a vertical asymptote, and these are my quarter points right here. So pi over two, three pi over four, and pi. And again, I think when we did the sine and the cosine function, the graph called those the, the special values or the key values here. So what we wanna do is we wanna take these and plug them in to our function. So again, they're pi over two, three pi over four and pi. 
So I'm going to need some more space. Okay. So I'll have my x values and I have pi over 2 and that's, let's go back, it's actually 2 pi over 4 so it is pi over 2 but I want to write this as 2 pi over 4 as well because we're going to see the connection here between those values. Next we'll have 3 pi over 4 and then our last one here would be pi or 4 pi over 4. Because if you remember on our graph down here, I have those written. And then of course when you write your graph for an exam, you would just reduce those fractions. It's just nice to be able to keep track of though in a common denominator. Now let's go back and look at what our original function even was. It was a negative 2 minus cotangent of x minus pi over 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to do x minus pi over 4 and then I'll do the cotangent of x minus pi over 4 and then I'll take the negative of the cotangent of x minus pi over 4 and then I'll subtract 2 from that. So I'm trying to break this down into smaller steps. So x minus pi over 4, so 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 1 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. 4 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. Now the cotangent of pi over 4 is in the first quadrant, so that's 1. The cotangent of pi over 2 would be cosine, which is 0, over sine, which is 1. So that would be 0 divided by 1 is 0. And the cotangent of 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant where the cotangent is negative. Now this says to negate it, so I'm negating this row right up here. So that would be a negative 1, 0, positive 1. And then I multiply it by, or sorry, I don't multiply it, I subtract 2. So negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, 1 minus 2 is, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So let's see what this graph looks like. And that would be my next step. Yep, step 5. Okay, so the points I'm graphing would be this pi over 2, 2 pi over 4, negative 3, 3 pi over 4, negative 2, and pi or 4 pi over 4, negative 1. Again, I like to keep it in that 4 pi over 4 because they all have that common denominator of 4, but make sure you do reduce those. Okay, so pi over 2 would be right here at 2 pi over 4, and I should have negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And at 3 pi over 4, I should be at negative 2, and at 4 pi over 4, I should be at negative 1. So it's going to come curving right up in here, and it didn't cross in the middle, but it has a symmetric point in the middle. So that's kind of interesting. So I can see one full period of the graph now, and I can also see that it's going to repeat. So if I had 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 4, I could go backward the other way, 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 4, and I'd have another uh, vertical asymptote at negative 3 pi over 4. And then I'd have the same pattern here. So this would be at negative 1, this would be at negative 2, whoops, this would be at negative 1, this would be at negative 2, this would be at negative 3, and it would come in like that. So that would be another example of how I could graph these. Now these do take a while, but once you graph them and start graphing them a lot, they'll become a little easier. So practice these a lot, don't skip these,
and make sure you know your unit circle. It's going to make things a lot easier. As usual, good luck.